Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Melinda Hart. You are watching Stamping with Hart. I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! and today we're actually looking at a pre-order product. Um, this is called the One Horse Open Sleigh Suite. I was just showing you the bundle right there. Um, this is block number F. And the reason that I'm showing this is because this is the largest clear block that Stampin' Up! has. Um, I don't know, you know, if everyone has a block this large, but the stamp that we are going to be working with today is about five inches long. It is a very large stamp. And the topic of today's video is three different ways that you can color a large stamp. So I originally was thinking five different ways that you could use a large stamp, and I may still do that. Um, but this actually turned into more of a way to color um, the images. So I decided to make that the topic instead. So this is block F. What I decided to do was lay the clear stamp down and then pick it up with the block because the um, stamp is very long and, uh, and un unusually long. Now, now here um, for our first of the three different ways to um, color a large stamp, I'm going to be using Stampin' Blends, which are alcohol-based markers. So whenever I'm coloring with alcohol-based markers, I use Memento Tuxedo Black Ink, which is what I just used to ink up this um, particular image on basic white cardstock. I'm using the regular basic white cardstock, but I know that many people um, who enjoy coloring with Stampin' Blends do like to use the thick white basic white cardstock. Um, so, and I should just say the thick basic white cardstock to correct myself. Okay, so um, I'm starting with the horse. So for, um, you know, the different ways that we can color, there are more than three, obviously, um, but I'm going to go with three of my favorites or three of my go-tos. Um, and the first is coloring with the alcohol-based markers um, that we call Stampin' Blends. Now we have a collection called the Natural Tone um, Stampin' Blends, and you can find those in our annual catalog in a different location than our other Stampin' Blends markers. This is color number 500, or this would be in the medium category. I think of this as a latte shade. Um, when I originally pre-ordered these, um, I got them in numbers. So it was numbered from 100, which is the darkest tone, to 1000, which is the lightest tone. And now I'm coming in with 400 to add a little bit of a darker tone here um, to that overall sort of latte, medium, natural tone shade. Um, I'm going in the areas where there would naturally be a little bit of a darker color or shadow. Um, and typically the artist who is, you know, um, designing and making those little lines um, and images on this stamp, they use usually add that sort of um, shadow area. So that gives us kind of a little bit of a cheat sheet as to where to put those, you know, darker colors and lay them down. So now what I'm doing is I'm coming back in with 500 and I'm blending those two together. So I'm just trying to make that a little bit of a softer line. That is one of the benefits of using um, these Stampin' Blends. Now I'm going another shade darker. So I'm going down to 300 um, and I am starting to color the hair um, on the horse with that. Uh, I'm now coming in with 200. And I'm literally just layering these natural tone blends in the browns. And then this is that darkest shade, which is 100. So they were originally called SU 100, but that would actually be the deep combo in the annual catalog now. So um, <clears throat> the One Horse Open Sleigh Suite. Uh, oh, and this is my Pebbled Path Stampin' Blends, by the way, which I just got. So um, June is my Pebbled Path um, Club for the In Color Club, and I am working um, behind the scenes on that now. And so I had actually just opened up these markers brand new, um, the Pebbled Path Combo, and I 
love them. I decided to use them with the sleigh. And wow, do I love this combo. Look at the depth on that. Even just with the two colors, the light and the dark and the pebbled path shade, um, just adding that depth and the difference in the color. So I think that, you know, having these brand new blends to show you um, really gives a good example of what it can add, even just in the most basic um, level coloring here. Um, it just really, really brings out um, the artwork, I think. So uh, if you, if you haven't tried coloring with alcohol markers, um, I highly encourage you to try it. Don't feel like you have to be an artist or that you have to know what you're doing. This is just very basic coloring. Um, there are, you know, techniques and things that you could get into to make it fancier. Um, and here I am coming in with my um, basic black light marker, and I'm just adding a little bit of um, detail to the horse uh, the straps there on the horse. This is the real red combo. Um, and you know, uh, real red pebbled path. These are coordinating colors as part of the suite, um, in the designer series paper pack that I'm going to be showing a little bit later in the video. Um, this designer series paper pack is a perfect pairing, um, with something this large, right? Um, when we're talking about the one horse open sleigh or we're talking about a five inch long stamp. Uh, we know that that is going to be the focal point. Um, it's going to be our uh, main attraction on the card. So the designer series paper was designed to, um, and now I'm adding some skin tone to them with those lighter tones. I believe that's 800 um, and 900 right there, which would have been, I think the light, um, either the light or the light medium combo pack. Uh, it's, it's hard to keep track, but, um, I will, uh, on the blog, I will make sure I have everything listed um, and I will have all the products linked as well. And you can get a link to the blog in the description box below. So you can see like where they are in the sleigh that they're covered by blankets and there's a couple of different patterns in there. So you could make them different colors. And initially that's what I was doing. I came in with the pool party marker first, and then I decided to get my shaded spruce because I feel like I just needed to get it out of my system to get those traditional red and greens in there. I do have a lot of neutrals in this too, um, and you'll see why when we're showing the designer series paper, but I just couldn't resist. I kind of just had to do it. Okay, and so here what I'm doing is I'm just adding those last minute touches, and this is the Stampin' Blends version of coloring. Now our next way, uh, number two, of ways that you can color a large stamp um, or a large scene stamp is with paper piecing with the designer series paper. So you guys will have to let me know if this is something that you do, um, paper piecing. I know this is a particular thing. Thing. Not everybody does it. And I just wanted to show you, I stamped way down in the corner on the pattern side of the designer series paper um, to be mindful of keeping the opposite side, which is the scene with the cabin, um, to keep as much of that intact as possible so that I could use that on a different card project. Um, so that's just something you may want to be mindful of if you do choose paper piecing using the patterns um, in this designer series paper pack, which is the one horse open and Slay Designer Series Paper Pack. Um, so here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp my image again using the Memento Tuxedo Black Ink again on Basic White. And we are going to use different pattern pieces from this Designer Series Paper to color in our images. Now, I'm not going to use designer series paper for everything, but I am going to use it for certain areas. Um, and this is just to give you ideas as to what you can do. Don't feel like you have to do exactly the same thing. Um, but I just wanted to kind of show you different fun things that you could do with this paper. Um, and I actually really love paper piecing. I use it for certain cards. I don't use it all the time. This isn't something that I would use on, you know, something that I was making 50 card projects for. But when you're having fun with a really large scale stamp like this. Paper piecing is ideal. Um, so something to consider. 
Now this paper here, you can see it's like almost like a really pale uh, wood grain pattern. It's like a creamy wood grain. And I actually thought that that would be a nice color for the horse. So I wanted, um, because the horse is such a large scale uh, part of the stamp, I did want to use paper piecing for it. And I did want to stick to this particular paper pack. You don't have to do that. You can use whatever paper you like if you want to paper piece the horse or you can color the horse in whatever way you prefer. I decided to take a chance on this wood grain pattern paper and I actually love the way it turned out. So um, when we're talking about those, uh, it could be tricky when you're trying to color in uh, white, you know, where you're just kind of creating a little bit of shadow with grays and things like that to make the horse look white. And you could just leave the stamp as is and not color it at all. But the concept here is to show you what paper piecing would look like. So I loved that the horse ended up being cream and ended up coordinating with the designer series paper later in the video when we actually put the card together. Now, when you're paper piecing, that involves fussy cutting. And I know that fussy cutting is not for everyone. So I completely understand if it is isn't for you. But if you like doing um, fussy cutting, which some of us do, then I think you will really enjoy the paper piecing aspect of this because this stamp is so large. It's, it's, we don't get large scale stamps like this all the time. So we really want to play with it. We really want to show it off. Um, and this is one of those things that you know, when a person looks at a card and they get the card from you, they might not be able to figure out exactly what you did, but they know it's special, right? They know when they're looking at it, they're like, wow, because they've never seen a card like that, that they've bought in a store. Um, you're never going to find paper piecing in a store, at least not that I can think of. So this is very distinct. Um, so not something that's done all the time. It does take patience and it does take a detailed hand, but it is so worth it in the end. Now, um, for the paper piecing for this particular card, I did three pieces, the sleigh, the horse, and then I'm also going to do the um, blankets that are in the sleigh with the two people. So like that blanketed um, section. And then I'm going to do some minimal coloring um, with my blends to color in the people but at least you can get a really good sense of um, what the paper piecing is like. And even with um, the blanket and the inside of the sleigh here, you can actually do this with multiple pieces. Like I just did it all as one piece to keep it easier, but there's all these little sections. You could actually like make like a patchwork quilt if you would want to. Um, you could get very detailed with paper piecing and really, really make it look stunning. Um, so it's entirely up to you. Now, um, for this particular video, I do just want to mention a couple of things about the one horse open sleigh suite. The first thing is that it isn't actually for sale until July 6th, 2023 to customers, but it is in what we call pre-order right now for demonstrators. So if you are a demonstrator, you can pre-order this suite in June. Now, the benefit to this is that we actually have a starter kit special this month. And for those of you who have been thinking about it or who are going to take advantage of the starter kit offer in June, where you get that additional savings, you actually can also put pre-order items in your starter kit. And that is huge, right? It's like an immediate perk of being a demonstrator right in your starter kit. So if you would just want the designer series paper, you could pop that in your starter kit because you get to choose the products that you want in your kit. And you can see here how perfectly the coordinating die cut out this large stamp. So I highly recommend the horse and sleigh bundle. Now, again, the bundle is in pre-order. The individual items are in pre-order. The DSP is in pre-order. The suite is in pre-order. So if you are a demonstrator or if you are getting the starter kit, you can get this in June. Otherwise, you wait until July 6th. This is something that is called 
an online exclusive. So it's not actually something that you can page through and see in the catalog. This is an online exclusive only. This is new in 2023 for Stampin' Up. Um, it's new for us demonstrators communicating to you. And so the one thing that I can impress or that I can say is that the first round of online exclusives was very popular and it went very quickly. So I would not wait. If this is something that you really want to get into or that you really want to do. Now here on the people, all I'm doing is adding a little bit of color to their hats. Again, real red, adding some skin tone to the faces, um, and then just uh, adding a little bit of that basic black light in the Stampin' Blends to the hooves, um, to the straps, and then also just a touch to um, the couple and their hair, uh, but really not a lot. So the rest of it was paper piecing, and I am coming back in with, I believe this is 500 again um, to make sort of like a leather looking strap was what I was going for here. And that is paper piecing, which is the second of the three ways to color a large image stamp. Um, so what we're going to do is move on to the third way to color um, your large image stamp, and that is watercolor. So what I'm using here is the Fluid 100 watercolor paper. This is available in our annual catalog. This has sort of like a very vanilla look to it and it's textured. So this is a little bit different than our cardstock. This paper is specifically designed to retain watercolor um, or retain water or, you know, use for watercolor purposes. It's safe to use. Now, in addition to that, I'm using Stays on Ink in Jet Black. And this is a solvent ink, which is safe to use with water, meaning it's not going to bleed or blur. Now on the, um, I will tell you guys that using this very large, um, this very large block, it was a little bit awkward for me. I am used to using a, um, what do they call it? Uh, a recently retired stamparatus, which is a stamp positioning tool. I would normally use that as opposed to this block. And it took several attempts at stamping this, um, to get this right. Now, um, I had done, I, I had originally filmed myself doing watercolor and it would not download. There's a technical issue that I keep running into. So I had to refilm it. So in my sample card, I messed up my sleigh a little bit and I decided to refilm it um, to show it to you. Now I'm bringing in my heat tool and here's what I recommend if you're going to do watercolor. I'm using water painters from Stampin' Up. You can get a three pack of these. I'm using our re-inkers and I'm using our heat tool. Well, actually this is a different brand heat tool, but I just bought the Stampin' Up heat tool and I can't wait to unpack it and use it. Um, but you can use whatever brand heat tool you have. Um, and this is what I recommend. And this was the mistake that I made with the first one that I specifically wanted to come back in and tell you all about. If you are going to be coloring watercolor on you know, very detailed images like this, where we're coloring the clothes, we're coloring the blanket, we're coloring the sleigh, we're coloring the hats, and we're maybe we're doing different colors, of course, um, as we're coloring. You're going to need to dry as you go. I always forget to do this and the colors always bleed together. And you know why I always forget to do this? Because I don't watercolor that often. So water painters have, um, like you can actually fill up the uh, inside of the water painter and you just squeeze and the water will come out or you can keep the water painters empty and just get a cup of water. Um, I have a couple of damp paper towels nearby, um, but I did actually fill up the insides of my water painters. Now the color combo that I'm using is real red on the sleigh, early espresso for the man's um, jacket, uh, real red for the hats. This is starry sky that I am um, coloring the blanket and I went a little bit dark with that um, on this version. I also go a little bit dark on the horse than what I wanted to. So um, the big thing with water coloring is take your time. Um, it's okay to build your color. And if you are going to be using browns and reds and blues, 
definitely heat set in between so that those colors, you can prevent that bleeding. For her jacket, I decided to go with Moody Moth. Um, and I actually really looked the way that it looked. That was the first time using a re-anchor for Moody Moth with my water painter. I think I'll be doing more of that. Um, but I'm just sort of cleaning off the tips as I go. Now, the water painters come in a three pack. I am using the medium and the small brush. Um, for the horse, I decided to use gray granite. And on my first one, I had a really soft gray horse and I loved the coloring on the first horse. With this horse, what I didn't realize was that I was using the smallest brush here. I was using the detail brush and you can see the color lays down really dark here. And this actually turned into a much darker horse than I was anticipating. And so I switched to the bigger um, brush tip here. I was just trying to get the red off of it so that I could switch to gray. And you will see an immediate difference in the colors between using the medium size brush and the small brush. Um, so just another thing to keep in mind here. So this is one of the reasons why we do this um, and demonstrate for you so that you can learn from our mistakes or see what we're doing. And then you can, you know, um, just kind of fix it accordingly, just depending on what you want to do. For this, um, I would say go light on the water. I put just, you know, I got one of our larger blocks out. I'm putting all of my colors on the same block, but if you don't want to have any bleeding, um, you could use different blocks for each color. And then I just decided to layer in the color so that I could get the two halves of the horse um, looking more consistent. So I typically wouldn't have colored the horse this dark, but in the end, I actually really liked the way that it turned out. I was going for a softer gray because um, some of the designer series paper is more muted. Um, but when we make mistakes, we can always adjust as we go. I mean, that's one of the best things about making handmade cards and projects, right? So that's what I'm doing here. Now, whenever um, you're using water painters and water in our re-inkers, Here's the rule with that. And it's, there's no, you know, hard and fast rules to this, but the more water you use, the less, um, detailed or concentrated the color, the less water you use and the more ink you use, um, it's much more concentrated, much darker color. So you can go from very light to very dark, just depending on how much water you're mixing with your ink. Um, so just something to keep in mind. So, uh, that horse is all gray granite actually, but the, um, hooves are just you know, using the gray granite, very concentrated. So it's much darker. And then the horse has more of a water mix to it, which is why you're seeing more of that gray granite gray look. Okay. All right. And then, um, as I finish this up, this is just a little tiny touch of petal pink with some water to give a little bit of a skin tone look very, very light handed. And then I'm going to heat set this because I am going to die cut this and I want to make sure that this is all heat set and dry. Now in the end here, I'm bringing back that original card where I made the mistake with the sleigh and I'm showing you the corrected version so that you could see, you can get much more detailed coloring, um, specific. So you can see where it's really dark around his clothes on the original and the horse is much lighter in color. So those are just two different ways um, that you can do watercolor. Um, but just to keep in mind and learning from my mistakes, I am by no means a watercolor expert, um, but you can really get some great use out of your re or your ink um, by doing some real super basic watercolor techniques. Now let's do the next part of of this. So for those of you who really enjoy nature landscapes, or you just adore stamping up artwork and papers, um, designer series papers, what I am doing is I am taking my time and I am comparing and going through with the different style sleighs that I've colored. I don't know if you can tell um, over on the side there, which one is watercolor, which one is um, alcohol markers, and which one is paper pieced. But what I'm doing is I'm going through all of the various scenes that the designer series paper has provided, and I'm just trying to see which one I like best with which scene. The reason why 
why I wanted to take some time with this and go through this and show this to you is because this paper I really think is going to be extremely popular. Um, this is paper that you can use for more than just Christmas. These are winter scapes. And not only are they winter landscape papers, which you could do for all occasions, honestly, they're all different scenes, angles, times of day, color combinations. I mean, I'm telling you, one has like more of a slope, like a sloping hill. One has a whole set of trees. One just has a really massive trunk. This one looks like it's part of like a snowstorm with a, a fox in it. Some of them are really more um, muted in tone. And then some look a little more wintry, right? So you can see how absolutely beautiful these scenes are. We have them from morning to afternoon to nighttime. Um, there's this one particular paper where there's like this glow. It's like a sunset glow. Um, you can tell that the sun is going down and you don't see the sun anywhere. Um, you just see the tree line, but it just has this look about it. You could just tell the times of the day. Um, and then we also have like a night scene with a cabin that is also so gorgeous. So you can see how these are fitting in with all of these designer series paper scenes. I really felt like this was worth taking the time to do. For those of you like me who do start your Christmas crafting in the summer, when you start in July, um, there are those of us who don't really love being outside in the heat. We like being in the air conditioning, right? And I mean, that might not be you. You might love being out in the heat. You might, you know, be camping or you might be going on vacation in a camper and you might be taking these things with you, right? <laughs> um, but for myself, um, I really don't like when it's super hot. So here is that a frame evening scene. Um, how gorgeous and stunning is this, right? You can see the glow on the lights on the tree um, coming from the cabin, the smoke that's coming out of the little chimney there. Um, and you can see how fabulous all of these different colored um, horse and sleigh images look with this paper. Now, I will say when you are creating the scene on the front of an A2 size card, which is um, four and a half by four, or I'm sorry, four and a quarter by five and a half um, on your card front, you do have, there's that, there's that glow with the tree line there. You know, you can see that it's sunset. Um, you have to pick and choose the piece that you're cutting that's going to be featured on your card front. So there's something that I like to do with the die um, that I am using or that I'm cutting it out with to make sure that I have the layout that I want. So it's really nice to color these pieces and die cut these pieces in advance and then just sort of um, puzzle piece everything together. This is one of those more muted tone scenes here that you can see, um, but I just... I can't get enough of this paper. The pattern sides are fabulous. Um, the, the, the snowscapes, the nature scenes are fabulous. Um, all different scenery. Honestly, there's like, there's one image where it's actually looking down into the forest and you can see like little footprints in the snow. They did not leave any detail behind, um, with this paper pack. So all of that to say, uh, this is just sort of my process. This is what I do. Now, there's so many stamps and there are so many dies that go with this bundle. And all I'm focusing on today really is the coloring technique for large scale stamps and then pairing them with the different scenes on this paper and in my process for doing that. So these cards are actually really simple layouts. Um, I'm using um, basic white card bases for these. Now, when you see that in six by six, that looks absolutely perfect, right? The sleigh, the horse, it all fits perfectly. But when you're putting that on a card front and you have to scale that down, 
that starts to look very different. So that's something that you want to keep in mind um, when you start doing your die cutting. Now, I will say that I am using um, the die from Gone Fishing. Um, it's this rounded, it almost, it reminds me of the way that photographs used to be cut, like back in the 70s and the 80s, where it has like those rounded corners, the rectangle with the rounded corners. Um, it's a really cool die. And I thought this would be perfect um, to cut out these scenes with here. So I'm just laying out all of the different scenes for you um, just so that you can see. And even when you pop that uh, horse and sleigh with that reindeer in the background, I mean, in terms of scale, they have thought of everything, right? <laughs> they really have. Um, so there's really not much that you need to do. You can just pop these, you know, centerpieces right on and they just fit right in. And when you follow the color combination, from the designer series paper pack, it makes it that much easier, right? Because everything matches. Now you may have noticed that I have been die cutting off camera. And that is simply because when I die cut with the large machine um, where I film on my table, it shakes like crazy. So I just figured I would just cut off camera and bring the pieces back on to finish the cards. Um, so I have plenty of videos where I show how to use the stamp and cut and emboss machine. And yes, you will definitely need your full size stamp and cut and emboss machine um, for this large scale stamp and die. Um, you probably, I haven't tried it with the mini, um, lengthwise and width wise, you might be able to fit it through the mini. Um, but if you're going to be using this large die to cut out the scenes with the gone fishing bundle, um, then you are going to need your full size machine. So just something to keep in mind there. Now, here is an example of laying down your die and realizing that you would be losing some detail that you might want from your paper, um, with your sleigh. So if I didn't want to lose any part of the cabin, which I don't, uh, you can see that now my, you know, the horse in the sleigh is actually covering the front of the cabin and it's okay. I mean, it, it still looks beautiful. You can absolutely do that. And you're still capturing the essence of the scene. I did not want to cover the cabin at all. So I decided not to use that particular piece of paper on these particular cards. Now I will, I guarantee I'll use that paper on something else. Um, but I couldn't resist using this slope. I really wanted to have these going in an uphill direction. Um, so that's the one that we're going to go with there. Okay, so um, for this next section where we're basically assembling our cards, now that we've gotten our layout, now that we've seen all the designer series paper, now that we've done our coloring techniques, um, to finish up these cards, it's actually pretty simple and it's all pretty much um, the same exact layout and measurements. Now, if you have any boo-boos like I did there, you can trim it off, even though it's a die cut piece. Um, I went outside the lines on that slay. So I just decided to kind of trim off that little back piece. No one's going to notice. Now you can see that these sentiments or the greetings that actually come in this stamp set also are pretty long. They have a pretty good um, large scale to them as well. It's like two and a half inches. Um, I think the one was closer to three inches. Uh, absolutely fabulous fonts. I'm always a fan of fonts. I love the font combination on these. Um, very easy to read. So uh, I am going to be using two different ink colors, Pebbled Path and then also Real Red. Um, and I'm going to be stamping directly onto the designer series paper. You can absolutely do layers and die cuts for your greetings. Now, because this is a brand new photopolymer stamp set, I wanted to do a couple of um, test stamps first, kind of warm up the stamp there before I stamped down my image. And I did decide to stamp my greeting at an angle because it is on a sloping hill. So you don't have to do that, but that was just something that I wanted to add on there. And I actually stamped it like right onto the shadow. If you really want it to stand out, stamp it um, more on 
on the white area, but I thought it looked really cool like that. So um, you can get the positioning of your sleigh. Um, now with the dies, there's actually these really cool like snow mounds that you can add. You could add um, trees like die cut trees um, to your scene if you would want to add a little bit more dimension there and some texture. Um, right now, like I said, we're just sticking with the designer series paper, the card base, and then this centerpiece of this large scale stamp is our focal point. Um, so with the horse and sleigh, I'm going to be putting them up on dimensionals on all three cards and I'm bringing in these snowflakes. So um, for those of you who watched my last live, I showed you that these snowflakes are very flat. Um, so they really are not bulky. Um, if you want to keep your um, image completely flat to the card, um, you get three different size snowflakes. You get them in three different colors, white, gold, Gold and like a copper color. Um, so, you know, you can have fun with those uh, and you can put a, a fair number of them on. I'm actually um, popping some real red into um, my ink pad here with my re-inker while I had them out. And then I got it all over my hands. So I was so glad I, I caught that before I started touching that gorgeous designer series paper. So Okay, so here you can see me stamping right onto the scene, um, and I love the way that this turned out. I wanted that pop of red against that sort of natural scene. Um, if you would want to do a layer of this red on the other side, because you get four sheets of every pattern, um, then you could glad you know easily do that. I just stuck with my basic white background. I love that it just had that thin white frame around each one of these nature scenes. I'm just really on a nature scene kick for anybody who has hasn't noticed between the May paper pumpkin kit and then they just threw me right into winter landscapes and because I'm team Christmas in July meaning I love Christmas in July all the things um I was all about it I I couldn't wait I was like yes let me do summer and then immediately jump into winter I am fine with this now these are those gold snowflakes are they fabulous oh my gosh they really just add something so um for those of you who want those flat cards just put your sleigh down flat as well. Just don't worry about the dimensionals. I can never resist because I don't mind dimension. But for those of you who do mention to me, and I get comments from you all the time that you love when I mention or show you that the embellishments are flat. Um, so, the, and I mean, they are flat. So you will love these when they come out. Okay, so uh, let me just talk about the starter kit for a few minutes, some of the details um, as I'm wrapping up these cards in this video. With the starter kit special, this is for the month of June 2023 only, you can actually save $56 in product value as opposed to $26, which is the usual savings. Um, and like I said, that ends at the end of June. Uh, you can put pre-order items in your kit, including the One Horse Open Sleigh Suite. So if you're gearing up for fall and winter and, you know, holiday crafting, uh, this is a great time to join and save. Uh, you get access to demonstrator only Facebook communities, which you have the choice whether you want to participate or not. You save 20% on purchases as a demonstrator. Once um, you've purchased your starter kit and you're an active demonstrator, you get first access to new catalogs and product launches. You get first opportunity to order with something that we call pre-order, which is actually what we're doing with this one horse open suite right now. So if if you have any questions about joining, um, please reach out to me. You can email me. You can direct message me. I would love to hear from you. I would love to have you join the team. Here are our finished card projects. Watercolor, paper piecing, and our alcohol marker stampin' blends. Subscribe for more. See you next time.